In this video, we are going to learn how to uh, use the transform slash compute function. So up here at transform compute. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called ref status. And notice that in our data, we have a myopic variable, which means it's binary. Uh, 0 is not myopic, and 1 is myopic. We have an emetrope variable, which 0 is, is not emetrope, 1 is emetrope. And then we're going to uh, have, but we don't have a hyperope. And we can either do one or the other of these things at any one time, but we want to do a refractive status. And we're going to set it so that 1 is myopic, 2 is emetropic, and 3 is hyperopic. And so um, <clears throat> we will look at, we're going to start with ref status equals 3. Now a lot of times what we want to do is just create a variable and fill in all the values of 3. Hyperope is one that we're not going to have because we're just using myopic and emetropic so we don't we don't have a variable right now we can label as hyperopic so um, it's going to be all other values and so we're just going to start with that we come up here ref status is three that's all we're going to do and we're going to hit ok and then we go to the bottom and here is it has created our ref status and if we switch over to our data view um, I clicked on ref status double clicked on ref status that brought us into data view and you can see that all the variables are now three so that's going to be our hyperop so right now everybody is hyperopic which of course isn't the case um, notice over here we have a compute variable ref status equals 3 and execute. So this is kind of like the syntax of what SPSS just did. Let's go to transform compute and it's remembered that we had ref status equals 3. Well, let's change it to 1. Now, if we just did this again, we'd overwrite all the 3s with a 1. So we need an if statement. And so we click on that button and we include if cases meet a condition. So we're doing one, so that's going to be myopic equals one. So, and then continue. So if myopic equals one, we're going to set ref status to one. Let's do that. Ask us if we want to change our existing variable, and we do. And now we've got our syntax over here. It worked. Let's double click there again. Now you see we have ones interspersed with all these threes. Now let's go ahead and add our um, emetrope. So that's going to be ref status is two. And we have to change our if statement. And I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to come over here. If emetrope is equal to 1, then hematrope is equal to 1, then ref status is equal to 2. OK. Change existing variables. Now you can see we have a couple of 2s. There's 1, and there's 1, and there's 2s and 3s. Actually, let's see what how many we have. Let's go to descriptive frequencies. And we'll come to the bottom of our list, ref status. Okay, now we see that we have 2,905 uh, myopes, um, 966 emetropes, and 10,656 hyperopes. That does not sound right. Why is that? Let's look at descriptive statistics, cross tabs, and let's do uh, myopic status at this visit. 
and then ref stat status, which is the referral stat or refractive status at the end of the study. We're going to do a cross tab. What does that show us? Well, that kind of explains it a little bit. So we have our refractive status at Myope. Well, at a visit, there were 15 visits that were hyperopic and then 1,543 that were emetropic prior to um, becoming myopic and then 1,346. One of the issues with this data set is that it contains multiple entries per person. That's a, a little bit of a problem. But what we want to do first is let's just um, set myopic status at visit equal to uh, rep, uh, refractive status at the end of the study. Um, so we want to select for those cases. So let's select if a condition is available. Click on if. And uh, we're setting refractive status equal to uh, myopic status. Continue. And say, OK, notice that we, we came into this selection. We set it up. Gonna hit OK. Now see all these slashes over here on the data set? Those are cases that have been excluded. So we have, for example, uh, case number 12338. Their uh, myopic status is not myopic. Now oh, let's do a different one that has something. Here we go. This one is myopic. Um, and this is a person who was myopic at the end of the study. And uh, let's see, where's their myopic, st myopic status? Myopic. Wait a minute, is this at the end of the study? No, that's whether that, here we go. This is myope. And that's the status at the visit. And then if we go to the end, this is their refractive status um, at the end of the study. And so those are equal, so that's selected. The one above it had a hyperope refractive status, but at this particular visit was an emetrope. So we don't pick that person. That's likely to be a case that would um, potentially end up um, myopic anyway. All right. So we have done that. Now, we might try one more thing because it would be good to, and I'll give you another example, it would be good to, um, get the last record. And so what we want to do in here, we have a case that is the last study year. We have the last study year, and we have the current study year. So let's transform, no, let's data select. We already have this condition. We want to add another condition. So we're going to say and, and then I'm going to put in parenthesis. Oh, actually, I don't think that's really necessary. Where study year equals the year of the last visit which is last study year. And this way, we'll only get one case. So let's do our, um, let's do our cross tab again. And what do we have? We have at, at the last at the last visit, we have 362 myopes, 313 emetropes, and 246 hyperopes. Now, when we do our frequencies or or do any uh, statistics, 
on looking at the distributions, we can tell what what does it look like when you're a myop um, for those people who were myopic at that visit. How many people were emetropes? Uh, emetropes at the end, or at least through the study period, were emetrope on that visit. How many people were hyperopes at the end of the study who were hyperopic on that visit? So we've substantially cut down our sample size from over 10,000 to um, 921, which is still a pretty decent sample size for, for looking at distributions. So um, one more thing I'll just add in here and that's to split the file. When we do go into our frequencies and other things, we will want to um, split the file by refractive status. So we can do QQ plots and frequency distributions and other things for each group uh, individually. So if we put in refractive status, we're going to look at these 921, but we're going to split them into these different spaces. Okay, so just to show an example of that, let's go to descriptives and let's just take the means of um, refractive error, spherical equivalence, and just say okay. And so for myopes, For myopes, the mean is minus 2.2254. For emetropes, it's 0.3725. And for hyperopes, it's 2.09, the mean spherical equivalence. Makes a lot of sense. All right, that's um, how you use the data step and the transform step.